able to actually display data in a box and whisker plot and then interpret um, data that's in a box, box and whisker plot. So first is the definition, a box and whisker plot, and you'll see why it's titled that in a moment, but it uses a number line to display the data. So again, make sure you have this vocabulary term written into your notes. So for the first example, we're going to just draw a box and whisker plot for the number of wins for the Boston Red Sox. And to do that, the first thing you're going to want to do is to write um, the data in order because we do need to find the median, we do need to find um, our lower and upper quartiles, and we also need to find the minimum and the maximum value. So just along the bottom here, I'm going to go ahead and write uh, these values in order from least to greatest. So we start with 78, and then 82, we have two 85s, we have an 86, 92, 93, 94, 295s, a 96 and a 98. So that's the first thing you want to do. We need to find our minimum value and our maximum value for our box and whisker. And while we're here, we're going to go ahead and find the median. So the median here happens to fall between 92 and 93. So the median is 92.5 when we add the two numbers and divide by 2. And these are things I've already figured out um, earlier in the lesson, but the median then happens to fall between 85 and 85, or excuse me, the lower quartile. So the lower quartile is 85, and the upper quartile is 95. Okay, we also have our minimum value and our maximum value, and these are all things that we need um, for the box and whisker plot. So I'm going to go ahead and create the box and whisker plot on the next slide, uh, keeping in mind these numbers. So you'll want to refer to these as we make the box and whisker plot. So the first thing you're going to do is draw a number line, and you need to make sure that your number line extends from at least the minimum value to the maximum value. Our minimum value is 78, so I'm going to go ahead and start down here at 70, and our maximum value is 98, and I'm going to go all the way to 100. And so then you just need to plot um, the values in between. So we have 80 and 90, and I'm going to go ahead and go by fives as well. So 75, 85, and 95. The first thing we're going to plot is our median, and our median occurred at 92 and a half. So that's halfway between 90 and 95. We had a lower quartile of 85 and we have an upper quartile of 95. We also like to put in our minimum value of 78 and our maximum value of 98. Now when you draw your box and whisker plot, it's important to remember that the box is around your lower quartile and upper quartile, and you'll see what it does is it traps that median in there. So we draw a line through the median so now you can see why it's called the, a box and whisker plot. So there's our box. We have our median in the middle, and we have the two uh, quartiles lower and upper on each of the ends, and we draw the box around that. Then you extend a line to your lowest value and your highest value. And sometimes we can put a little line through it like this just so you know that it's right at 98. But this is what a box and whisker plot looks like. Typically things aren't labeled, but I am going to go ahead and label these again so that you remember. This was your minimum value and this was your maximum value. Here we have our median and we had lower quartile and upper quartile. So that's a box and whisker plot and that's how they are all drawn. If we were to have any outliers, we don't in this case, I went ahead and figured that already, but if you had an outlier, say way down here at 70, you would use an asterisk like this to denote uh, the outlier. I'm going to go ahead and erase that since it's not really there. 
So when you're interpreting box and whisker plots, um, it's important to remember that a longer whisker, which is the, the line on the end that goes to the max or the min value, or a longer box indicates that the data has a greater range. It's basically just more spread out. And if you have a short whisker or a short box, that indicates that the data has a lesser range and the values are more concentrated. So let's look at um, a box and whisker plot and see if we can interpret some of the data. Here we have the number of chart hits for the top female groups in the United States displayed in this box and whisker plot. And if we look at the box and whisker plot first, let's, let's pick up on some things. First, it looks like we have a median in between 15 and 20, maybe right around 17 and a half. We have a lower quartile, it looks like at 15, and an upper quartile, maybe closer to 26. We have a minimum value right around 10, it looks like it might be at 11, and we have a, or excuse me, yeah, minimum value, and we have a uh, maximum value right at 30, and also an outlier at 45. So the question uh, first for letter A is what percentage of the groups had at least 18 chart hits? And what's important to remember is that the quartiles, remember that they split your data up into fourths. So this first part here from the minimum value to the first uh, lower quartile, that's 25% of your data. Then this second little portion here in the middle from your lower quartile to your median is also 25% of your data. Then we have from the median to the upper quartile, which is another 25% of your data. And the last section from your upper quartile to your maximum value is another 25% of your data. And it's interesting here because some parts are a little more spread out. Remember that that just means that um, the data is, it has a wider range and it's not as concentrated, but it's still 25% between each chunk. So if we're looking at right around 18 chart hits, which is probably what this median is, that's probably about 18. How many had at least that? So we want everybody from here this way. What percentage is that? Well, it's 25% plus 25%. So we would say that 50% of the groups have at least 18 chart hits. Yo. Next, we want to know what the length of the box tells us about the data and the length of the whisker. So you can see that the length of the box, we have a short part and a, and a wider part. So from 15 to about 18, we have more concentrated data. So what happens there is that there are a lot of groups probably that have that many chart hits. So several groups with chart hits that fall between 15 and 18. So 15 to 18 chart hits is very popular uh, number for top female groups. Then the second, the, the third section of this graph from the median to the upper quartile, that's a little bit wider. So from 18 on to about 26, not as many chart, not as many groups with chart hits, not as many groups. So remember, the wider it is, the less uh, concentrated the data is, or the fewer numbers you have in there. Here we have another box and whisker, and this is similar to kind of like that back-to-back -back stem and leaf because we're showing uh, we're showing both on one number line. So we have two fitness clubs that are analyzing their daily attendance for April. So how does the daily attendance at the athletic club compare to the daily attendance at Superfit? So you have athletic club here at the bottom and we have Superfit up at the top. And I want you to take a minute to kind of study both of these box and whisker plots and see if you can come up with some conclusions. There are several things that can be said here and you don't have to list everything that you notice, um, but you do need to make some comparisons. So first, if we look at the athletic club's highest and lowest daily attendance figures, they're both greater than Superfit's corresponding. So what that means is that Superfit has a greater range um, of attendance. So you can see that their lowest is about 55 at Superfit, but at Athletic Club it's 50. 
and also Superfit's highest is 70, but Athletic Club's highest is 90. So we have a wider range of data with the Athletic Club. Also, um, another thing that you can say is that the attendance at the Athletic Club is uh, greater than 80. for the 25th for, uh, percent of the time. So we have 25 percent of the time we have athletic clubs attendance is greater than 80. But if you look at Superfit it's all 70 or less. So it looks like the athletic club um, is probably a little bit busier um, because we do have several values that are, that are much greater than what Superfit ever sees. So maybe it's a bigger club, um, maybe it's in a different part of town where you know, more people are, are closer to it. So there are lots of things you can say to compare. Um, you can look at the median values and compare those. And the median for Superfit is right about oh, 62 or 63. And the median for the Athletic Club is right around 72 or 73, so it has a higher median. Um, but you need to be able to look at box and whisker plots and analyze them. So in class, we'll work on worksheet 13.4, and if you don't finish this, it will be homework.